Last year, during the regional bank crisis in March, uh, Bitcoin uh, shot up 40% as the KRE, the regional bank index, was imploding. And here again, the regional bank index is acting up. Uh, and after uh, a little bit of a correction, uh, after 11 ETFs were introduced, um, we are seeing Bitcoin catch a bit again. Uh, so this idea that it's a flight to quality or a flight to safety uh, is reasserting itself here. Kathy Wood, the founder, CEO, and CIO of asset management firm ARK Invest, has been pro-Bitcoin for at least a decade after her Florida-based firm first bought a $100,000 worth in 2014. With the worsening economic and geopolitical conditions around the world, Kathy has become even more bullish on Bitcoin, especially when compared to gold, the historical safe haven asset. Kathy believes Bitcoin is changing the 5,000-year-old narrative that sees investors running towards the precious metal in times of turmoil. She gives the example of last year's US banking sector crisis, which caused widespread panic and forced investors to rethink their strategy. During the crisis, between March and April 2023, Bitcoin's price moved from a low of $20,000 to over $30,000 per coin, a 50% increase. In the same period, gold rose by only 11%. Kathy notes that one of the first signs of the impending crisis was a drastic reduction in the KRE, the Regional Bank Index. Last year, the index had a free fall from over 60 in late February to around 44 about two weeks later. With the bank term funding program coming to an end next month, the index is acting up again, currently trading at its lowest since November 30th, 2023. While presenting ARK Invest's Big Ideas 2024, Kathy notes that the impending crisis could be even greater for Bitcoin now than in 2023. This is because investors now have easier access to the leading crypto assets through the spot Bitcoin ETFs. In addition to her short-term bullishness, Kathy is also extremely bullish in the short term. Bitcoin is a part of the public blockchain, one of the five disruptive innovation platforms Kathy believes are going from $19 trillion in equity market cap estimate today to over $200 trillion by 2030. We will now bring you clips from Kathy's latest broadcast as she discusses her team's research and the importance of seizing the opportunity early. Please watch, share, and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks, and enjoy the video. If you look at the market today, um, roughly 19 trillion of the 117 trillion in global equity market cap is associated with disruptive innovation. So let's let's say a, a little more than 15 percent. If we're right, and and with Brett's guidance, our analysts have uh, you know built the building blocks uh, for us to be able to say this. Uh, if we're right, that 19 trillion is going to scale to 220 trillion uh, during the next really seven, eight years, seven years. So that's a 42% compound annual rate um, of return. Um, and whereas the rest of the world, we see appreciating little or nothing at all. Why would that be? It's back to that creative destruction. The, the, the traditional world order is going to change radically. And uh, the, the traditional benchmarks, the broad-based benchmarks, whether it's the S&P 500, MSCI World, and um, uh, the NASDAQ, for example, um, they're, they're not going to be able to keep up with this. And, and one of the reasons, we learned an important lesson from, from Tesla the S&P did not put Tesla in that index until it had hit $500 billion in market cap. Why? Well, uh, two of their criteria uh, are uh, four, uh, a four-quarter moving average of profitability with the last quarter uh, profitable. Well, Tesla didn't hit that, I think, until... 2020 or 21. I, f I forget. I think it was 21. Was it, Brett? I'm yes. Sure. And just think, think about that. How many companies are bigger than that 500 trillion? And oh, by the way, 
most people who waited until the S&P gave them permission <laughs> to move into Tesla uh, are underwater right now because they're, as, as uh, is always the case, with disruptive innovation, there's controversy, and it has taken uh, taken the stock down. Anyway, so so we're pretty excited, and as you can see, uh, we delineate uh, those growth rates by major innovation platform, with robotics being uh, the the fastest uh, the fastest uh, growing. Uh, it's also at a very very low base. Industrial robots, in particular, very low base. Um, whereas AI, 37%, uh, that is off of a substantially larger base. And just to give you a sense of the drama here, even for us, and all we do is focus on disruptive innovation. Um, in, I believe this was 2020, our expectation for the market cap of artificial intelligence out there um, in five years from now was... I think $40 billion. Now it's up to $400 billion. Kathy's conviction in these five innovation platforms, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, robotics, genomic sequencing, and energy storage, is so strong that she believes their convergence and rapid growth will forever change the trajectory of the global economy, much like how the telephone, electricity, and internal combustion engine revolutionized the global economy in the early 1900s, but this time on a much larger scale. While these three platforms created a five-fold increase in real GDP growth, Kathy believes these five platforms will do much better. Experts estimate a deterioration in growth from the average 3% we've had over the past century to a range of 2.6%. Kathy's research puts the estimate at an amazing growth rate of 8.5%, even in the least bullish scenario. This increase will see these platforms claim a bigger share of the global equity market cap, going from $19 trillion today to over $220 trillion within the next six years. Kathy further predicts that this unprecedented growth will have notable effects on Bitcoin and Ethereum prices. Her long-term predictions for both crypto assets are $1.5 million and $28,000, respectively. Let's get back to the video. Last year, during the regional bank crisis in March, uh, Bitcoin uh, shot up 40% as the KRE, the regional bank index, was imploding. And here again, the regional bank index is acting up. Uh, and after uh, a little bit of a correction, uh, after 11 ETFs were introduced, um, we are seeing Bitcoin catch a bit again. Uh, so this idea that it's a flight to quality or a flight to safety uh, is reasserting itself here. Uh, the, the reason we believe Bitcoin went down after the ETF um, after the ETFs were introduced is because there was a lot of anticipatory buying before. Uh, before Bitcoin or the ETFs came out, uh, there was a bit of the sell on the news. These are the trading types who uh, just are, are very opportunistic in that way. Uh, 15 million of the 19 and a half million Bitcoin outstanding are in what we call strong hands. They're, they haven't moved their Bitcoin in more than 155 days. And, and this chart uh, just shows you that even relative to gold, uh, Bitcoin has been rising. It is, there's now a substitution into, uh, into Bitcoin. And uh, we think that is going to continue now that there is a much easier way, less fric friction-filled way to access Bitcoin. On the macro side, Kathy is less bullish. Kathy believes the U.S. economy may be heading for a harder-than-expected landing. This would mean moderate to severe recession, higher bankruptcy rates, layoffs, and harder times for Americans. She believes this could be worsened by another regional banking sector crisis. According to recent reports, the situation is getting gloomier for regional banks in the United States. U.S. banks hold about $2.7 trillion in commercial real estate loans. About 80% of those loans are held by smaller, regional, not-too-big-to-fail banks. Much of that debt is about to mature in a high interest rate and low property valuation environment. 
This will make collecting on those loans extremely difficult for regional banks. An example is what happened with New York Community Bancorp last week. The regional bank reported a $252 million loss in the last quarter, compared to a $172 million profit reported in the same period in 2022. The company also reported $552 million in loan losses, a significant increase from the $62 million reported for the prior quarter. Over the next few weeks, this could easily blossom into another banking crisis with positive instantaneous effects on Bitcoin prices. What are your thoughts on Kathy Wood's analysis about Bitcoin, the US economy, and disruptive innovation? Please share your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications, and give this video a thumbs up for more. Thanks for watching.